Okay, let's continue with the uh, video right here. Uh, where we left off, we had just uh, finished discussing uh, general suggestions for how to approach this analysis and looking at uh, uh, looking at it in terms of as if you're coming into a lab and so you know, the data is already acquired and stuff like that. But you want again, we want to make sure we're comfortable with the analysis methods. Um, right now. We'll probably just uh, go through the rest of the slides, and then uh, after this, we can move to the command line. So um, again, this is uh, AFNI start to finish, um, single subject analysis, and then maybe a quick group analysis at the end. The uh, stimulus conditions, uh, might as well make this bigger since I'll just chat during most of this. Uh, this is a speech perception task. Uh, we got the data from Mike Beauchamp. Um, and uh, basically there are just two conditions here. They're both auditory and both visual stimuli together. Um, they're basically short clips of uh, people saying uh, brief words like cat, and in one case um, the auditory aspect of the stimuli is uh, reliable, and as in it sounds good, you hear cat clearly, um, but the visual aspect is degraded. In the other case, the visual aspect is reliable, it looks clear, you can see the, uh, the person speaking, Audrey in this case, but the uh, audio aspect may, de be, may be degraded a bit. So those are the two conditions. You can imagine they both invoke a strong visual and auditory response, but there may be some differences between them. This was actually used, I think, for a, a localizer, but uh, we'll pretend it's what we want to do a full analysis and publish our papers on. So the experiment design, there were three runs in the, sc in the scanning session, and each run consisted of, ten, consisted of 10 blocked trials, five of each condition, five, five blocks for the auditory reliable stimuli, and five for the visual reliable stimuli. Uh, within each block, which is less important, we're going to pretend it's like one long stimulus, but within a single 20 second block, there's actually 10 short trials of ARL or VREL, and these, these 10 trials are basically the single words, which um, you can say each word lasts about a second, cat, whatever, it's not exactly a second, and then there's uh, an inter uh, stimulus interval of one second where it's it's quiet, so you, you, you have spacing between the words. So we could actually pretend that one of these events is actually 10 one-second events as like an on-off period in there, but it really wouldn't make much difference to the results. So uh, we could we could call this a long 19 second block, but uh, just to make everything nice and round, the way we like it in some sense, uh, we'll just say that these are 20 second events, um, and then they're going to be separated by a 10 second fixation. So uh, again, we'll be able to detect strong responses here because we will contrast. Uh, each stimulus event against a, a fixation baseline where they're not seeing or hearing any stimulus. There's just uh, a little fixation cross on the screen. So, but calling this 20 second event now one stimulus event, there will be five such events for the auditory reliable and five such for the uh, visually reliable stimulus condition per run. And then across three runs, we have 15 of each condition. So uh, two anatomical data sets were collected for each subject, uh, I believe with the intention of running a surface-based analysis. So they might have wanted to uh, align the anatomical volumes together and average them to hopefully get some noise cancellation and maybe create uh, surface surfaces from free surfer. Um, and with the noise cancellation, maybe they'll be a little a little better than otherwise. Um, and then there are three EPI datasets correct, collected per subject, again, for the three runs. 
that a single run is where you start the scanner, do your stimulus, and record the EPI volumes or slices over time, but uh, slices going into volumes, and then hit stop. That would be a single run. And for a single run, uh, 33 axial slices are collected per volume and then 152 volumes within the run. The, the TR, the repetition time between volume acquisitions, is 2 seconds. So basically it takes 2 seconds to acquire the 33 slices. And then the volume voxel dimensions are 2.75 millimeters within plane. So within one axial slice, the resolution is 2.75 uh, square millimeters, and then 3 millimeters across slices. That's, that's the separation between the 33, each, uh, each corresponding pair of the uh, slices there. So uh, note that we will consider for this analysis the, those two volumes to be pre-steady state. So that's only four seconds of time. That's not what you would normally do. Normally, you'd probably drop about 10 seconds or so. But uh, we'll pretend that uh, there are just two pre steady state volumes, and then that will leave us with 150 remaining to analyze per run. Uh, the sample size here is just n equal 10 subjects. That's, of course, way too small for a typical analysis. but. Uh, two things to note one is this is just a, a demonstration so you know you wouldn't you wouldn't have only 10 subjects normally unless they were incredibly rare or something but uh, with 10 subjects we actually get reasonable results in any case because again we're comparing strong auditory and visual sensation stimuli against just a simple fixation crosshair so that's that's the data that we acquired. Again, we have three EPI runs of 33 slices by 152 volumes, uh, plus the anatomical data sets. And we'll just have, uh, we'll just consider one anatomy for this, uh, this simple analysis. So recall that to perform the analysis, now that we've got the data in hand, and assuming we've made our processing choices, how we want to do the pre-processing, how we've decided to model the data, uh, we want to actually create processing scripts to do this for each of our subjects and, 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 and run them so that we get our, uh, our magnitudes uh, of the bold response, the, uh, this, um, the, uh, 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 the effect sizes for each voxel. We get volumes of the effect size in standard space aligned to the template of our choice so that we can run the group analysis on those and with a t-test in this case and get our uh, get our great results for publication so how do we do this to run the single subject analysis we'll use afneproc.py and what is it it's a program that's gen that's used to generate the processing scripts for single subjects and it can run the processing scripts too. You just add the execute option. Um, basically, it's it's a program so that you can give a fairly short command uh, to generate a long processing script. And what that long processing script will do is one, it's going to create a new results directory and then copy the needed inputs into that results directory. Basically, the point is that now everything under the results directory is generated. So if you have to change something, if you realize you made a mistake and you have to redo anything, you can just delete that whole processing tree and do it again. You're not mixing inputs with outputs. That's, Im that's important. That's a good uh, habit, keeping clean data in one place and then process data elsewhere. So now, once it copies the input data sets into the results directory, it goes into that directory and runs the analysis, does the processing, time shifting, alignment, blur scale, regress. Uh, and then it leaves most of the results in place to allow for one to, to review the pre-processing or to review all of the processing, including the regression, to decide if things look good or if there's some uh, something that doesn't seem right to review what seems to have gone wrong. 
and then it creates some review scripts uh, single subject review scripts you can run these to uh, to generate live AFNI controllers that can verify registration and look at your uh, stimulus uh, response curves your ideal response curves and censoring and things like that so you can you can run these things for live quality control or more recently we have uh, the HTML AFNI proc quality control uh, pages generated uh, by Paul Taylor's work and that's kind of initially it was set up as a snapshot of the SS review driver script but now it's it contains more than the driver script does so it's uh, it's a nice way to view view the the uh, QC results pretty quickly per subject so uh, so AFNI proc the proc script will generate all this stuff what is AFNI proc itself though it has uh, you give it the data sets and it has many options for control over the pre-processing steps or the processing in general including QC so um, there are there are helps in the uh, there are examples in the help output for getting started and those are it's good to think of uh, to look at the examples and see one that might match what you are doing and then modify that to uh, to fit your needs the generated scripts are in T shell syntax T shell as opposed to bash for example bash is probably a more powerful language but T T shell is uh, a little easier to read and write and for researchers that don't want to invest themselves in a lot of time learning shell scripting uh, T shell seem like a, a more reasonable um, syntax to use but anyway it doesn't matter because you don't have to mat master the T shell syntax to use the proc script but you do want to be able to read it and understand what it's doing so along that uh, along that line the, the proc scripts are written to be easily read and you should read them and see what they're doing uh, they're also written to be modified easily modified but you really would rather not do that scripts are often four five six or more hundred lines long and uh, it's hard to know if you make a mod uh, if you make a modification in one part of the script or whether that means you really ought to be making 10 other changes elsewhere and so preferably uh, you'd like to run AFNI proc per subject and not have to modify the proc script uh, and then and then you'll have the proc script in the subject uh, output tree wherever you put that and then the, you have the analysis results along with the processing method all, all in one place so you can easily verify what was done there is a graphical user interface that I mentioned earlier, ubersubject.py. Uh, AFNIPROC.py has uh, well over 200 options. Just to see AFNIPROC-help-show-valid-ops, pick the word count, it has 235 or so options. Uh, Ubersubject doesn't have controls for all of that. so. Um, and it's it doesn't have some of the more recent things like multi echo uh, options and things like that and and uh, Tedana. So uh, I do plan on updating Uber Subject Pi, but right now it's probably better to focus on Afni Proc. So um, what's going to be done in the rest of these uh, videos? Um, the data the data and scripts are all under um, FT. Uh, analysis with the top level directory AFNI data 6 and so we'll go into that directory we'll look at some of the scripts just to see what's there once we're happy we'll run the analysis by running uh, script s05 so we'll we'll focus on that and look at it later and that will run the analysis and then once the analysis is done all the results are being stored under our subject ID dot results directory and we can run AFNI there to look at uh, what happens during each of the processing major processing steps 
then if you want to you can run the SS review driver script to open live AFNI control windows to look at uh, regressors and motion and uh, alignment and things like that um, or and we'll also look at the HTML QC report and then eventually run a group analysis run a t-test um, with uh, with our 10 subjects results um, the rest of the slides we don't have to pay too much attention to because we'll go through them ourselves they're just showing commands approximate commands that we might run here's our group analysis and again note that there's a tutorial under the FT analysis directory uh, it's a bit old but it still might be useful if you want more text details about commands that can be run and what they mean um, but for now I'll just leave this uh, leave this video for here and then we'll um, we'll start a new one where we'll, we actually go to the terminals and uh, enter the directories and start looking at some of the, the, the data so I'll stop this here